What is up guys? Today we are learning about automation in Ableton Live 10. Automation is real-time manipulation of an audio signal um, and changing pretty much whatever you want changed without having to touch anything. So, before we get started, I'm going to get a drink. Mm. Ah, yeah, today's video is sponsored by Trop50. 50% less sugar and calories than real orange juice. Damn, would you figure that? All right, let's jump right into it. We are gonna go to our recording page of Ableton Live, and I'm gonna bring you right up to these two little dots right here. You wanna click on those two, and that's gonna bring you to your automations page. I have a guitar, um, an electric guitar solo in here, and we're gonna add some automation to that. These are you're gonna be what you're gonna be automating. Right now, we only have mixer on here. You can go to track volume, and these are your insert returns found back at the main page, A reverb and B delay, A reverb and B delay. If you wanted to add automation to those, we totally could. Just hit A reverb, and then you want to drop it and load it down into an automation panel. This is gonna be your original dry source. It's gonna have none on it, but now we can drop it down. These are gonna be our automation panels, and we can add more automation panels. So, loading the mixer, and we can put a B delay and we'll drop that back down. So now we have a mixer B delay and a mixer A reverb to play or to automate in within our tracks. Let's play this. Um, let's play this out real quick. Okay, cool. So that pretty much repeats throughout the whole thing. Um, uh, if you were wondering what button I just clicked, that actually moves the entire screen with the audio, um, which is pretty cool. It, I just figured that out. It was pissing me off so much. That one little button would have saved me hours of scrolling. You know how many times I scroll? A lot, a lot when, when I'm working on a project and that would have, that would have definitely would have helped out. Um, but back on the topic on hand. So basic automation, we'll go into a B delay, we could take out reverb, right. Um, and you can go down here to this red line. So this red line means that the automation is completely like it's, it's not loaded, it's completely off right now for our delays, uh, we can take this and we can make a selection. And we can pull it right up. And now we can hear what the changes it made. And bam, it cuts right off exactly how I want it. Um, and if you didn't want this automation, you can easily go right up here, right click and clear the envelope. Now, an easier way to do this, highlight your selection, there's going to be six dots that appear, I'm not sure if you can see this one, two, three, four, five, and six, and you can raise that right up, you can also extend these clips right here if you would need to on these side dots right here. That's gonna be a lot faster automation process for you. We're gonna clear that envelope and I'm gonna show you a couple different ways that you can add an automation. Highlight a selected source of what you wanna automate and right click. You come down here into your insert shapes. These are gonna be all the different types of shapes that you could possibly want during an automation or something at least to get you started. So we have that one, we'll command Z. We can have like an S curve. All right, we'll stick with the S curve for now. You can also adjust and pull out this S curve if you wanted to um, to have a longer effect or a, a different sort of like automation in, in your track, whatever. Um, you can also copy and paste this automation as well. So we have it right here. We're gonna highlight this. We're gonna Command C or you can right click and copy and then we're gonna Command V or right click and paste. So you can paste these in if you would like. Now we're gonna take those out. Say if you did like the automation right there and you wanted to move it somewhere else because you think it would sound cooler somewhere else, select that automation that you just made and look at what happens when I put my mouse up next to that line. The whole thing turns blue. Um, so same as if you go up, it turns blue. If you go down, it turns blue hold your mouse, click it and drag, and you can drag this automation anywhere. And within your selected region, 
it will also create sort of a fade. You see that red line that's sort of attached to everything? And then you can just continuously moving it on. I don't know what the heck that came out of, but that was actually kind of cool. And you can really start messing with things through this automation. You, could you, you can do some crazy stuff. It's pretty cool. Now we're gonna go back here. See, now we have a red dot on our mixer. We'll hit mixer. That's what we have loaded up right now, our B delay. That's our red dot. Now we don't have anything on A reverb. That's gonna be our insert on A. So we'll load this down here and we can put that, just some random shapes in here for that automation. Now we have A and B. You come back down here, you go to mixer, and you can see exactly A and B, those red dots popped up again on exactly what you have automated. We'll hit none so we don't get confused. All right, and now let's add some more things in here. So right now we only got mixer because that's the only thing that we have to manipulate. We'll go back to our, we'll go back to our page here. Here's our solo and we'll grab like, you can grab anything, honestly, like a flanger. We'll load a flanger on here. We can load a uh, overdrive, a phaser, and shoot, why not, another reverb. There are four processing units right here. Um, you can activate or deactivate each processing unit by this uh, button right here. And you come back, you will see everything in your automation list now. Now we got the flanger, the overdrive, the phaser, and the reverb. So we can go over to phaser. We'll load phaser up. So now here is our phaser automation. We'll put in a quick automation in here. Um, and for some reason, that is the only shape that we have. We'll go back. And that is interesting. Now that actually turned that back on. I left those off for a reason just to see if they would show up or what they would do. So that red dot tells us that we do have automation now within our own track. This is going to be phaser on and off. So that's what we have right now. We can go to phaser, phaser on and off. So that's why we can't do any other more shapes. Click on and off and everything that we see here is going to be on our phaser and everything that we click on is able to be manipulated and changed through automation. So we'll go into uh, our like phaser LFO. We can add this, we can add that plus button, take off or on and off, whatever. And now all our shapes are gonna be back up here for an LFO, like an S curve or whatever. And we can extend this. Um, we can definitely extend this out if we want to. All right, so now we got a lot of automation going on. Let's automate like something on the reverb possibly. We'll bring this down. Um, this is actually, you gotta be careful because now it says reverb device on. I didn't go back and change it. So reverb device on, now we can click like a wet and dry ratio. That reverb right here is gonna be our wet to dry ratio right there. That's what we're automating right now. And so we'll do phaser on and off. Let's see, no, we want our reverb. We want our reverb wet to dry ratio and let's manipulate something in the wet to red eye ratio. So bam, there you see it. There is a red dot right there. So that's exactly what we manipulated. You can also right click on these right here and you can delete automation or command delete to delete the automation. We could totally take that out. So command and delete. All right, now you're probably wondering what the heck this white line is. Well, you, Whenever you make an automation, say if we make an automation on a reverb, right? It's gonna put in that automation. But if we make a change, because now that automation was off, it's going to turn this white. It's gonna show you what you have automated. So you can, in the past, you can actually go back and re-automate if you would like to. Hit that just to keep all your automation deleting automation. So we got a lot going on in a lot of different places, right? We got a phaser, a reverb, and a mixer. So reverb, phaser, mixer, I take out this other mixer. So those are three different locations, three different processings that we got going on in this one track. If you wanted to clear 
um, an automation on an envelope, like these are going to be our envelopes, you can easily clear that automation. Um, but if you wanted to clear everything that's just on a reverb, you're going to clear all envelopes of reverb. And this would be all envelopes of phaser and so on. Now, if you wanted to completely reset everything, all automation that's on that particular track um, on your sound recording, right click, clear all envelopes. And that's what's going to pretty much do for you. You could then hit these minus buttons to go back. Note that once you create an automation, you hit those minus buttons and you don't see the automation anymore. Be wary that your automation is still there and you will be able to find your automation by going back and you see any of those red dots that pop up into any one of these that you change for the effect. Now, let's move on to clip gaining. Clip gaining is another way of automating, um, but it will save you so much more time than deleting a certain section of the track, like right here. Um, and you you can easily just, now you can't really delete that, but I'm saying what, what clip gaming is, is say if we solo this, right? There were some clicks, pops, and there was a breath right there that I didn't want to have uh, to be in. A lot of people will go command E, command E, select and delete. That way, when it plays, you don't hear anything. But then it splits up your entire track and at the end result, you're gonna have to consolidate it all back into one track. It honestly just makes things more difficult than it needs to be. So if we come back over here on our vocal track right here and we place mixer, track volume, that can be our clip gain. That way we can select a region, your six dots will pop right back up and you will be able to drag that back down. And it doesn't matter if you click the top dot right here or the bottom dot. That way we can have our our drop. Say which and it goes right back into it just like nothing ever happened. And that will that will take care of like any fan noises that's going off in the background or whatever. You can also take those out with like RX plugins. Those are very, very good. Um, good uh, plugins to use when you're trying to just get rid of any excess noise. All right. Now, let's clear this automation by right clicking clear envelope. I have both my roommates vocals and my vocals within the same track. I subgrouped these vocals and you can also do subgroup automation, which is really handy. <laughs> Honestly, it is it is the cat's pajamas like Cast pajamas handy, but all right, let's uh let's do some subgrouping automation. If we can go to mixer, let's go into an A reverb, and now whatever that we choose here, it will automate both of these tracks. Say what you mean, say what you mean, say what you mean, if you really mean it. Yeah. I just kind of slowly bring say it back down. What you mean, say what you mean, if you really mean it, yeah. Mm hmm. Alrighty then. That just automated both of those tracks. So we can clear envelope and we should be good. Let's see. Another quick thing I'm just going to add in this video is see your sends right here? You can actually deactivate. An individual scent or you can deactivate both scents so I thought that was pretty handy Ableton really does give you the option to do pretty much um, whatever you possibly want um, to a certain restriction <laughs> all right that about wraps it up for Ableton um, on automation if I missed anything please write down in the uh, the comments um, hey, you missed this. I'm like, oh shoot. Okay, sure. I'll add that in another video. Um, write down, also write down what you want to see in the future uh, with these sort of tutorial videos, because uh, that's what Simple Stride is leaning towards. Is more Ableton tutorial videos uh, for you guys, because I want to help you out. Because I know it is such a pain to learn a new software, and it took me at least like two or three months to to learn this one. Um, 
but yeah, go and try this exercise, practice automating, um, get really, really good at it because in the future, it is going to help you so much and your workflow is going to progressively change. Um, I know that it, once you get stuck in a workflow, anything new, you're like, no, I don't want to, I do not want to do something new. I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm comfortable being here. I'm not comfortable being over here, but getting out of your comfortability um, and being able to explore more options with Ableton and being able to use this DAW to its full extent will help you in the long run, I promise. So please, if you like these videos, give a thumbs up, you know, help me out. And uh, also, if you are not, if you're a new, uh, if you're a new viewer, please, Hit that subscribe button if you love these videos and more videos will be coming out very shortly. All right, peace out guys.